Welcome Classic Rock Fans to an unboxing and today we've got Jethro Tull A, the a la mode 40th anniversary edition. So with no further ado, let's get the cellophane off it, shall we? So as with these Jethro Tull issues, we get these wonderful book bound editions, which are just absolutely fantastic, overseen of course by the wonderful Stephen Wilson. So let's open that up, shall we? That's the first disc, which is the original album and associated tracks. And there's the live disc. Put these back. Now I must say Stephen Wilson has done a, a wonderful job on this record. When it first came out, I always found, um, felt that it sounded a little bit too uh, brittle at times. I think it was um, certainly apparent on a lot of albums released in the 1980s. His version of this has emphasized some of those deeper resonances. But I think the best job is on the live recordings. Now I had a lot of this stuff as a, a bootleg years ago and uh, there's a lot of uh, in-between noise, hiss and things like that that have just been cleaned up. I think with uh, Stephen Wilson, his work on it is just a greater sonic clarity, which is just um, absolutely remarkable, absolutely wonderful. He doesn't mess about too much with the original aesthetic of the album. Uh, you know, he, he's very mindful of the artist's intent. You know, the stereo placement is as it was, and the balance is just absolutely perfect. But it does sound a lot warmer. As I said, with some of those deeper uh, resonances are uh, slightly emphasised on on this album. I must admit, the biggest shock was uh, for me the uh, Passion Play issue, because those Shadow Disaster tapes. Uh, once it had been stripped of all those 1980s affectations that Anderson had added around about 87, 88 for the 20th anniversary box set, once all that reverb had been taken away, they sounded so stark and so naked. But uh, as Wilson said, they were definitely more in keeping with the, the, the time that they were, they were produced or recorded. As you can see, the, you know, the quality and attention to detail is absolutely fabulous. This is the DVD. DVD 2, in fact, live at the Sports Arena in 1980. Slot that back in there. This is uh, considered to be a bit of a Marmite album by uh, a lot of Jethro Tull fans. I remember speaking to some Tull fans that absolutely hated this. Uh, I, I rather enjoyed it. I enjoy it even more now, I have to admit. Uh, this, of course, was originally going to be an Anderson solo project hence the A, which would uh, mark the original tape boxes. And of course he moved away. I think a lot of Toll fans were couldn't forgive the fact that he moved away from the, that classic uh, trilogy of albums and that lineup, that wonderful rustic period, as I call it. Uh, disc one associated recordings that include Crossfire and Extended Version, Working John, Working Joe, Take for them. I mean, this track dates right back to 76, I believe. Cheerio in early version and Corisic. I hope I've said that right. I believe that's a lock in Scotland somewhere. And Slipstream, Slipstream Introduction. Then we get the wonderful live stuff at the Sports Arena in 1980. And then we get that wonderful textbook, of course, the lovely picture there of Eddie Jobson. Uh, wonderful book going into depth and history and, and making of the album. I mean, that, that's what makes these uh, editions so special is the attention to detail, the amount of information that is included. Yeah, there's Dave Pegg there. As I said, I think Dave Pegg joined at the uh, latter end of the uh, Stormwatch tour. Uh, Sir John Glasgow was just too unwell, I believe. Now, Barry Barlow, of course, said after the Stormwatch tour that he was quitting. I think he obviously was quite devastated at the loss of his friend. And the other members just sort of moved away, really. Of course, um, uh, Anderson has said that he, he'd wished that he had resisted at the uh, brow beating by Chrysalis Records to make this a Jethro Tull album. We should just stay with his original plan of this being a solo record. 
it's interesting really if that had been the case what would have happened when he did decide to convene with Jethro Tull whether he would have whether those uh, original guys some of those original guys would have got a phone call I have no idea uh, I haven't seen a lot of these recordings uh, sorry I haven't seen a lot of these photographs I meant to say excellent Wonderful, looks like a still from the slipstream video. Now I made an issue with the slipstream video that uh, I always hoped that we'd get a fully restored version of this concert. In the 1980s of course they would release VHS concerts on music videos that would usually run for about an hour so they were trimmed down for that market but I often wonder, now I'm pretty, I could be wrong of course, but I often wonder the cameras would have been taken to these shows, they would have filmed the whole thing, they wouldn't have just filmed selected songs. So, so where is the, the rest of the footage? Has it been lost? Is it available? I don't know. There's the irrepressible Mr. Peg, Peggy or Dave Peg. And there's Jobson, of course, uh, straight from Roxy Duties. This is a wonderful, wonderful picture. There's lots of uh, TV performances from about this time, um, which uh, I'd love to, have, love to for them to include on, on this but uh, I suppose it's the problem is securing the rights it's probably devilishly expensive and Ian Anderson would probably say well it's on YouTube you can just watch it there brilliant Mr Barry, Martin Barr, Lancelot Barre, Eddie Jobson with his fabulous glass violin Danny Hill with a wig can't wait to read what that's about Brilliant picture there of Ian Anderson. And that's what marks these out. It's just the, the amount of detail, amount of work that's put into these are just, even if you're just a casual fan of this, uh, this album, it's worth having just, uh, just the amount of pleasure you get from looking and reading through it. As I said, it was a bit of a Marmite album for a lot of Tull fans. A lot of Tull fans uh, weren't keen. Two Tull drummers there. Three tall drummers there. The excellent Mr. Stephen Wilson. I cannot wait to read this. Yeah, it's, uh, I'd love to see a fully restored version of that A concert. I don't know if the footage exists or not. It, it's different for something like Pink Floyd Live at Pompeii, who only actually played the songs that they filmed. They didn't play any more. The director has confirmed that. But for this, uh, I, I'm assuming that there's a, there was a full show filmed. Wonderful drama. Sad loss. Obviously these are lifted straight from the original tour program. And Jethro Tull tour programs were worth every penny spent back in the day. They were just uh, marvellous. Headroom. Oh, crikey, I haven't seen that for a long time. I wonder if this has been remastered as well, the actual concert film or not. I do not know. Um, nevertheless, I'm grateful that they've included it. I'd love to know what it uh, actually looks like. A slipped in chronology. Uh, it's one of the concert. Nice ticket stubs there. 
And what discs do we have here? There we go, there's the original slipstream. And there's the rest of the uh, CD, the live, the live show. Original ALP plus associated, associated tracks, remix by Stephen Wilson. I do apologise for the noises in the background. This is uh, uh, midday on a Saturday, so we're trying to keep the children quiet a little bit of And then we have the, the back of it. So in terms of the live recordings, you get Slipstream, Introduction, Black Sunday, Crossfire, Songs from the Wood, Hunting Girl, Pine Martin Jig, Working, John Working Joe, Heavy Horses, Musicians, Introduction, Skating Around the Thin Ice for a New Day, uh, int instrumental, trio instrumental, keyboard solo, batteries not included, uniform, protect and survive, bungle in the jungle, encore intro, aqualung, locomotive breath and black sunday reprise. So that's what we get on the live show. So there's the spine if you want to look at that. And there we have it. Jeff Rotol A, a la mode, the 40th anniversary edition. Uh, I realise I'm preaching to the converted, but you haven't already purchased this. I uh, encourage you to do so using the Amazon links just below this video so that my channel gets a small commission at no extra cost to you. Anyway, you've been watching Unboxing. I hope you're all staying safe, keeping warm, but more importantly, I hope you keep listening.